Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas and it's going to be yet another session in this lecture series on engineering drawing. Well, today we're going to be taking up one more problem on development of surfaces. This is basically an application of this concept of development, which we're going to be trying to work out. So let's begin. Here we go. That's the problem description. First of all, let me go through the description and then we'll write down the data given in it. So draw the projections of a cone resting on the ground on its base. All right. And show on it the shortest path by which a point P starting from a point on the circumference of the base and moving around the cone will return back to the same point. Okay. So the base of the cone has been given as 65 mm in diameter, the base radius or base diameter in fact, and the axis is 75 mm long. That is the height of the cone is 75 millimeters long. Object obviously is a cone. These are the dimensions given to us. Then there is this condition which is resting with its base on HP. So basically the idea behind giving this condition is you have to either start by making the front view or the top view. Now, if the cone is resting with its base on HP, just think about this. Just try to imagine this from where can you see the true shape of the base? Well, base's true shape can only be seen from the top. Therefore, you have to begin by making the top view first and then its corresponding front view can be made. Now, guys, uh, here is the deal. Uh, look at this very carefully. This is sort of, let me make a rough, rough diagram of a cone. Okay. That's the cone. That's the axis and that's the base radius. Base radius has been given as, um, diameter has been given to us. That is 65. So the radius is going to be 32.5. And as far as this axis length is concerned, height is concerned, this has been given as 75. Now, when you try to unfold this cone, it would be something of this sort. Okay. S like the sector of a circle and the angle that it is going to subtend over here, let's say is represented by theta. You can actually go ahead and calculate how much this angle works out as. So we have a formula, something of something like this radius of base over slant height. So let me go ahead and calculate this angle. Base radius has to be taken as 32.5 obviously and divided by slant height. So this over here is the slant height. Now guys, if you watch carefully, this is 75 and this is 32.5 please see where the cursor is hovering this appears as a right angle triangle okay with the right angle over here this is 75 this is 32.5 and this is the slant height that we are interested in this is the slant height and if you were to calculate the slant height it would be it can easily be done in fact with the help of pythagoras theorem okay so equal to under root of this 75 square plus 32.5 square 75 square plus 32.5 square and theta is going to work out as 141.13 degrees to be very precise okay up to two decimal places approx you can say so we've got the value of the angle subtended now let us go ahead and let me explain you what this is all about so we have a cone okay the philosophy with which i'm going to be explaining you this is with the help of an ant let's say we have an ant over here okay the corresponding top view of the ant let's say is over here and this is let's say this is the center of the um, circle you can say this is the ant in the top view and this is the ant in the front view right and this is the ant in the development right here so okay you can assume that this uh, cone has been cut about this generator and when you unfold it and lay it absolutely flat um, it would be something like this that's the development development that's the front view and that's the top view you you guys know this know this stuff very well now that what is the challenge in front of the ant okay let me write down what the challenge is now since it is a smart ant okay so we are expecting something good to happen the challenge is that the ant has to travel has to start from this point and then it has to travel around the cone Okay, and then return back to this position by taking the shortest path. Okay, now let me repeat this. The challenge in front of the ant is that it has to travel along the surface, along the lateral surface of the cone, and then it has to return back to its original position, making sure that it has taken the shortest path. Now, in order to work all of this out, the ant has to take the help of this development technique. I'll tell you how all of this eventually works out. Now, some of you guys may say 
that so the the ant is going to travel in this circular base okay this way forward and then it reaches over here that means over here this way and then it's going to go back this way from here to back to its initial position that means here that's one way of looking at it and you can essentially say that in this case the ant would have traveled if it goes by the circular base then in this case the ant would have traveled from here 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 and then it finally it's going to reach here okay this is the initial position only don't don't worry right don't get confused secondly some of you guys may say that sir uh, the ant will travel in this manner in front okay in front like this in front we've reached here and then back that's front and then back of the cone in this manner this manner this is also a valid point a valid answer right but we have to be very precise we have to be very concrete in whatever we are answering now guys just remember this if this is a point and this is a point and if i ask you what is the shortest distance between these two point your answer should be this the shortest between distance between these two points is nothing but a straight line and this is the philosophy with which you're going to be using and we're going to be working out the track that this ant should choose in order to make sure that it has traveled the minimum distance okay now if you were to make this plot over here it would be something like this something like this this new one well some of you guys would say so it can travel this way also okay in that case uh, it would be something like this okay something like this and in the corresponding development it would appear something like this but we need to make sure this is the initial position and this is the initial position okay don't worry in order to make sure that the ant has to travel minimum distance the ant must travel in the form of a straight line at least it should appear so in the development and then only we can go ahead and say that the ant has taken the shortest path now let me go ahead and demonstrate how all of this can be worked out with the help of this development technique so here we go we're going to begin by this so we have the circular base okay since the cone is resting with its base on hp the true shape of the base can be seen from the top and therefore we are beginning by making the top view first let's have these divisions eight parts let's start from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so the ant is right here let me tell you uh, let me have a different color that would be better blue color so the ant is right here okay let's have the front view this is going to be how much this is going to be the axis length which is equal to 75 and let's finish this and in the front view the ant is right here okay so what's next we know how much this angle theta has worked out as it has worked out as 141.13 so let us go ahead and do this right this angle right here guys is theta which has been worked out as 141.13 now we have unfolded this cone over here and all these points are going to reflect somewhere along this curve okay all these eight points in fact so eight divisions has to take place in this particular sector also so what you need to do is you need to divide this sector into eight equal parts the best way is to first go for two divisions then two can be made four and then four can be made eight that's it okay the ant is right here let me let me make this once again the ant is right here and it has to reach here you can see okay now let's have all the points the shortest way to reach back to its original position right is a straight line and here it is and in that process it has actually intersected some generators let's say that the intersection over here is represented by a here let's say the intersection is represented by b and so on these are the intersections what we need to do is we need to transfer these points on to this orthographic projection and then we can actually work out the track that this ant is going to follow on the surface of the cone in order to make sure that the distance traveled by it is absolutely minimum so here we go the first point is obviously going to be this one okay you don't have to worry about that the next thing is to take this arc you need to keep one leg of your compass at o other leg at a 
okay so with capital o a as the radius and with this o as the center you need to cut an arc along this generator that's the true length okay of this slant height you can say that's it okay now this has to be shifted over here transferred over here why let me tell you the reason a point is on generator o2 all right and g point is on generator o8 so this generator over here it may appear as if there is only one generator but there are two generators one at the front in the form of o2 and one at the back in the form of o8 so there are essentially two generators which is going to give us two points on generator o2 we have point a on generator o8 we have point g so what we've basically done is we have taken o a as the radius okay and with o dash as the center we have cut this generator that is the true length of the generator right and then what we're going to do is we're going to travel right hand side absolutely horizontally and then we're going to reach here this point let me make it once again this point is what you call point a and point g this way a dash g dash right now what we have been doing till now in case of development of surfaces is that there had been a cutting plane over here okay it was passing through some of the generators let's say that the cutting plane passed through this generator 2 and 8 okay our cutting points a and g so what we did was we shifted these points over to the true length okay and then we took this arc and when this this guy is the center we had to cut an arc over here and we got point a and we had to cut an arc over here also we got point g the stuff that we've done right now is an absolutely reverse development process wherein we already know how the development is and what we are doing is we are transferring these cutting points you can see if i can say so onto this front view so we are going to do the same stuff with point b and with point f let's do this now what we need to do is you need to take ob capital ob as the radius with this o dash as the center you need to cut an arc once again and where is b on o3 generator and where is f on o7 generator so you need to shift these this point over to the right hand side this way on 3 on 7 this way and this is precisely the location of f dash and b dash that's it similarly you need to take this o da o c as the radius all right now o c and o d same radius don't worry with o dash as the center you need to cut an arc over here this point has to be transferred somewhere else has to be shifted somewhere else where so c point is lying in 4 4 generator or o4 generator and 6 point or this e point is lying on generator o6 so 4 and 6 so we have to shift this point over to this generator 4 dash 6 dash something of this sort and that precisely is the location for c dash and e dash and finally we've got only one point left that is point d and we know very well point d is already on a true length because you can clearly see this is not point one guys this is point five dash to be very precise right now you can clearly see this o1 and this o5 generator both of them are absolutely parallel to the x y line therefore their corresponding front views that is o dash one dash and o dash five dash are reflecting their true lens that's it now you need to take o d as the radius and with o as the center you need to cut an arc on the true length you can directly cut an arc over here i don't know what i have done let me check okay i've cut an arc on the true length and i need to shift this over here that's it and that's precisely the location of point d i could have directly um, put up an arc from taking this o dash as the center that could have been done so that's point d when you join all these points in proper sequence with the help of a smooth curve this is exactly what you're gonna get okay so from the front it appears as if that's the path that the ant that the ant which initially was at one dash is gonna take right okay so if the ant is gonna travel all the way around the cone how does it look from the top let's work that out so what essentially we're going to do right now is i'm going to shift all these points a g f b c e and d all these points down below this way so point a is on 2 point b uh, point g is on 8 so this is going to be point a and this is going to be point g all right let's work out point c and point e 
point C is on generator four and point E is on generator six. You can you can actually work this out from this development also. So let me bring these points down below. This is going to be point C and this is going to be point E. Okay, this. That's the point that I'm talking about. Um, have we missed out something? Point D also is going to be there. So point D is lying on generator O5. So let me project it downwards on generator O5. This point corresponds to point D. I'm missing out something. Okay. Now guys, in order to shift these two points, F and B, now point F is going to be somewhere along generator O7 and point B is going to be somewhere along generator O3. So what we need to do is shift this point towards the left. Okay. And then with this point, you need to produce a line in the downward direction this way. Okay. Then keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here. These two lines are extremely close. With that much amount as the radii, one leg over here, other leg over here, with that much amount as the radii, you need to make a semicircle, something of this sort. Let me show you. And this is going to give you the location of point B. And this over here is the location of point what? F. Right? This is going to be point F. I don't know if you can see that properly or not. Right? And if the ant starts moving, it's going to be something like this. Right? So from the front, you're going to see this, this way. This way, the ant is going to travel this way. And in the development, you can clearly see that the ang the, the track that the ant follows is a straight line, right? So this is the this is the actual track in the top view. This is the actual track in the front view. That's it. So guys, that was all from my side for today. If you've got any doubt or query, do write them down in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer them. And if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering drawing, then do share and like this video, subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you get a notification, you get an update. Anyways, I'm going to be back with more such videos on drawing and mechanics. Until then, it's a wrap. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care, have a great day and keep learning.